Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video for Honeybee Stamps. Today we're going to be using some older products. This is Hello Sweetheart, Love is in the Air, and then the sentiment set that I use today. Oh, hold on, I gotta look. Um, the Get Well Soon. That totally makes sense. And then I'm using the Burlap 3D embossing folder. So here I'm just kind of trying to get an idea of my layout so I know what exactly I need to stamp. I mentioned just a second ago that these are some older products and they are, and I've used them a lot of times. And sometimes when we have products that we've had for a while, but we still love them, we're just maybe not sure how to utilize them for a third, fourth, fifth time. I've used both of these stamp sets multiple times and um, though I've never used them together, so that's like the first change. But also, I'm going to look at a different color combination to change up the way that I am doing them. Consequently, it's going to change the look and the feel of the card. And switching up your color palette is something that you can do to kind of get more out of things you already own, to get a, uh, you know, achieve a, a different look or a different feel for your card. And I think sometimes we don't think about that as an option. Like we we see a stamp set, we envision the way that we want to use it or maybe the way we've seen it used. So here I have a color wheel. And what I'm pointing out to you here is a, what we call a double complement, which means it's two sets of complementary colors. I know that I have flowers, leaves, birds, and then whatever my background is going to be. And so I knew I was going to need at least four colors. So a double complement made the most sense in order to get things that would work well together. What I ended up settling on was a pink and yellow green complement, and then a orange and blue complement. And so we're going to use these and I'm going to show you how I... Oh, manipulate sounds like such a bad word. How I, um, but that is what I'm doing. Like how I manipulate the colors to make them the same but different and also work together. So what I've just done, what you just saw, was I did some mapping. This uh, particular set, this Hello Sweetheart set, uh, I love. And like I said, I've used it before. I think it's a beautiful image. It also comes with stencils. If you're not a colorist, that's an option for you. But I like to color, so I'm going to color it. And there's two different styles of flowers kind of in this heart shape. One of them I'm going to do pink, and one of them I'm going to do purple. Now, you might be asking yourself, Kelly, where did the purple come from? Purple looks good with all of the colors that I am using, but my purple isn't going to be in your face, and you'll see how we switch that up when we get further along in the coloring. Let's talk about the coloring a little bit. So here, this particular flower is drawn in a side view, and it's drawn in a way where there's lots of lines put in by the illustrator. So I'm just following those guidelines. I am starting with my darkest color, but if you're not confident about your shadows, start with your lightest color, work out to your darkest, and from your darkest back into your lightest. When you get to the darkest color and you're working back out to your lightest, this is when we're going to start filling things in. So each time you're going to cover the previous color. So when I'm starting like here with an RV69, when I go in with the next color, uh, which is an RV66, I'm going to cover all of the 69 and then extend it out a little bit. And then when I'm going over the RV66 with the, I don't even remember what the next color was. What's my next color combination? Oh, it's a 50. It's a 55. It's an RV55. Then each time I'm going to extend it out a bit. It'll be the same for the purple flowers that you see here. I'm starting with a V09. I'm putting this part in where I want the areas to be the darkest. So where two points meet, where one object lays on top of the other. So this one petal off to the left here is curled up over itself. There will be a darker shadow where it's curled up over itself. That petal will be darker than the rest of the petals because there's less surface area showing to catch the light. 
So once I put down the V09, I will cover up the V09 with the V06, and then I will extend that out a little bit. But you will see that you can still see plenty of that pink because that I have to conserve it for my next mid-tone as well as my highlight area. So we want to make sure we're just going over that line and extending it out slightly. We're not adding a ton of color on top of that. So uh, the majority of this is then going to get filled in with this VO4, and now the smallest area will be left for our highlight, which is going to be our lightest purple color. You could totally leave it like this. I'm not going to. Um, I'm going to do some color glazing and some other things to make them appear, all of them to appear to be more pink. Starting off with different bases will just help them stand apart from each other because they are clearly different florals. You know what I'm saying. Um, so yeah, story time. Uh, we'll start with a, um, the one that isn't, a, I guess, a well, maybe it is a big story. I don't know. We'll start with that one and we'll see what else we have time to fit in. You may notice that my editing of this video is actually um, slightly different. So there might be areas that kind of jump or maybe they don't have a as smooth of a, of a crossfade. But for the most part, it's done very, very well. And it was done by Peanut. He edited my video. How did this come about? I thought I was teaching him a life lesson. <laughs> Uh, famous last words of every parent. I thought I was teaching him a life lesson, but um, I think it kind of kind of backfired. Um, so basically, he came to me, and this was quite some time ago that he came to me the first time and said that he wanted to start a YouTube channel. Now, we've had this discussion before about how you know being on YouTube as I am here now visiting with you, um, is not just like some people in the neighborhood or it's not just the kids at school. It's a worldwide thing. And whether we like it or not, whether we agree with it or not, not everybody in the world is nice, kind, good-hearted people. And I obviously am a card maker, which thankfully our community is filled with the vast majority of nice, kind, encouraging, good-hearted people. But the videos that he wants to do are, that's not the same type of genre. Um, and so we were talking about it and I, you know, I was like, buddy, I think you're still too young to be on YouTube. Like I'm suspicious of everyone always that might have something to do with the job that I did for 20 years. It might just be my general personality. I don't know. But I think everybody is suspect because I am a parent. Uh, so when it comes to, I don't mean like in life in general, but I mean when it comes to my kids, I am suspicious. <laughs> so anywho, um, we were just talking about the, I said, okay, well, what do you think it takes to put together a YouTube video? Because it is a lot of work. We have to go back to the card. So here, this is the start of how we're going to switch up the colors. So I'm going to go back into my pink flowers with the darker. You can see the one that's already done um, when I move my hand because it's underneath my hand. So I went in with a VO9 and then a VO6. And then for the lightest colors, I am going to switch over to the pinks. This is going to make them deeper and richer colors, but it's also going to turn it into a purplish pink magenta kind of flower. Alternatively, for the purple flowers that already have a purple base, I am then going to go in with my pinks over the, the my lightest pink, which is the RV52, all over the flower. And then just from the tips in, like towards the base, I'm going to use an RV55. So again, they look different because the bases are different, but the glazing helps to make them look more cohesive, like the pink that I'm originally going for. So this is just something that you can use. Um, I, I've done it in tons of other videos. You've probably seen it before if you've watched my channel, um, but it's a great way to change up the look of the things you're coloring. It's also a great way to stretch your markers if you don't have a lot. So I've chose some more golden yellows. These are going to be the center of my flowers. Um, I suppose I could 
I could stretch it to say purple is yellow's complement. And so then I would have three complementary pairings in this card. Uh, but really, there's very little yellow that you see in this card. So could I say that? Meh. I don't know. It would be a stretch. Um, and then we're going to move on to the leaves, which is the yellow green, which is pink's complement. So anyway, I was like, you know, there's a lot of work that goes into um, YouTube videos. And I said, so you tell me what it is that you think you would need to do to create a YouTube video. And so he said, well, I would have to film it. I would have to edit it for hours. These are his words, not mine, for hours. Um, and then I would post it and, I, and share it. And I said, okay, how are you going to film it? And, you know, he gives me the dumb um, look with a camera. What's going to hold your camera? What point of view are you trying to shoot from? You mentioned editing it, but you didn't say anything about doing a voiceover. Well, I'm not going to do a voiceover. I'm just going to talk while I'm filming. And I said, okay, how long does it take mommy to make a card? He goes, a couple of hours. I said, how long are mommy's YouTube videos? About a half an hour. I said, so that means there's an hour and a half of footage that is edited out that only leaves a 30-minute video. So if you're going to talk through your filming, you're going to upload a YouTube video that's an hour and a half long? Well, I guess I didn't really think about that. And I'm like, editing is a lot of work, kiddo. Like you, when you jokingly say, oh, you know, edit it for hours, it really is. It's not something that's, you know, super quick and easy. And um, so then that, this is the life lesson, right? So I was like, great, I have a video that I need to edit. I will sit down with him. I will show him how to do it. And then, um, you know, he can do it and he can see how much work it is. Let's go back to the card. So now our floral heart is done. I think it's beautiful. I'm super happy with it. For the birds, I have used these birds so many times, but I almost always color them blue. True story. <laughs> Nobody's surprised because I love blue. And I think they're beautiful blue. I'll try to link uh, one of the other cards that I've used these, um, either one of these stamp sets uh, at the end if I think about it. And so I decided I was going to use the blue and orange. But instead of doing the birds blue, I decided to do the birds orange. And so I'm, do I'm following the same principles. Um, any point where something is behind another. So this back wing will be darker. The head is kind of behind the, the breast of the bird. That will be darker. These layers of wings that we're putting on, the, those are going to be a bit darker. In order to extend out the line, and give it more texture, I am going to take my darkest color and do some flicking to extend out the black stamp line, which is just going to give it more texture. And then I'm going to work my way out to my lightest color. And I'm going to do the same thing with the other bird. So anyway, I tell him, you know, I sit down with him, I show him the software, I show him the different, you know, things that he needs to do, the things he needs to remove. Um, and it took him it took him about 2 hours to edit the video which is not terrible i mean it's it's really not like he was being over exaggerating when he said like hours but it is a lot of work and then you have to add in the voiceover and the uploading and the linking and all of that i wasn't i was not trying to get him into to all of that i didn't even make him do the photos um i was just editing the footage so it took him almost two hours. And then so at the end of it, I said, did you gain a little bit of perspective? Like, what did you think about it? And he comes back with, I liked it. I was like, great, I'll put you on the payroll. <laughs> like, <laughs> but he did do really very well. I was very impressed. I, my child is not one that has a ton of stick to all the time. And especially if he's not enjoying something, he really stuck with it. He, when he didn't know, he asked questions, which is really big for him. Uh, cause he doesn't, he likes to just do things his own way and not the necessarily the proper way. He wants to do them his own way. Um, and sometimes those things coincide and sometimes they don't. But he really did do a good job. He got the video down um, to about 36 minutes. I did go in uh, after the fact, like the next day, and do some more editing. And I explained to him why I was taking out what I was taking out. I said, these are things that you wouldn't know that you needed to take out. Um, 
but they they just weren't necessary. Like for the mapping section of the video, he left everything in, all of the mapping. Um, and I'm like, they once they've seen a couple of flowers get colored pink, they they get the idea. They don't have to watch me for you know five minutes just coloring a base layer of colors. They get the gist of it. But he wouldn't know that. Um, so I was very proud of him for sticking with it. I was pretty impressed by the end uh, product. And um, so that is the video that you are viewing. It, he he did it. He knocked it out. And I, like I said, super impressed with his ability to stick with it and, and the um, product that he finished with. So yeah, I thought I was teaching him something. And I think maybe I just encouraged him further to become a YouTuber. <laughs> Oh, he's still too young. I told him that. I was like, don't think because we've edited one video now we can have a YouTube channel because that's that's not what this exercise was for. Like, you're still far too young to be doing that. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, uh, but now I know in a pinch I could ask him to edit a video and he could, he could do it uh, and do it well. So, <laughs> good to know. Good to keep that information in my back pocket. So now these little birds, I'm filling in the um, lightest color. Then we're going to cut everything out with our coordinating dies. At this point, I am thinking the birds are maybe a little bit too bright for the kind of richer color I have in the florals, but I'm not 100% sure. Here, I wanted to cut out the background so that you would see like this little peep of white when we popped it up. But honestly, I just couldn't bring myself to cut it and waste that navy cardstock. So what I did was I white heat embossed the florals on top of it um, so that I can use that piece on another card. I just couldn't bring myself to get rid of that full piece of cardstock. Here, now that I have everything on the card, I definitely think that the birds were too bright. So I went in and I chose a more desaturated orange. I believe this is a YR14. So that four is telling you its level of saturation. So it's kind of in the middle. And I'm just going to color over the entire thing. This does knock back some of the brightness. Um, it still wasn't enough for me, but we'll come to that in just a, a little while here. For the sentiment, um, I chose to just white heat emboss on the same navy cardstock um, that I am using for my background, and I just uh, went with sending you sunshine. I like the sentiment because I think it's very encouraging, and um, you can never, like, you could be sending somebody sunshine because they're not feeling well. You could be sending somebody sunshine because you want to encourage them. You could be sending somebody sunshine because it's their birthday. Like, I just, it's a good general, and the same thing with the images. You know, the florals and the birds. Like, I could send this for a lot of different things, and you guys know I'm a big fan of versatility. Like, I am here for the versatility. Uh, that's also, I mean, same reason why we're using two stamp sets that I've used, you know, multiple times for videos because they're still good. I still like them. Um, I can still make them look different than previous things that I've made and there's no reason for me not to continue using them. So now here I cut these out also with their coordinating dies. And then here is the burlap. It's the 3D embossing folder. This is such an excellent one just to add some texture. I, this isn't even supposed to look like, like for me and my card design, I, I'm not even looking for it to look like burlap. I'm literally just adding texture to the background so that it is not plain. Um, it just adds a little something. So even though we have that solid background, uh, you can see it, you can feel it with your hands. We have the, you know, the difference between the um, embossed background and the textured background. Really, really like that look. The wood one, the wood grain one is another one that's really good for this type of uh, design. I don't like the white outlines. That's no that's no state secret over here. You guys, if you watch my channel, you know that. And so I am going to go in with a B99, which is a navy colored um, Copic marker. It matches the Hero Arts nautical card stock pretty much spot on, which is what I'm using. And I'm just going to color 
the all of the white areas. You don't have to do this. It's pretty with the white. I just like it better when it blends into the background. So I have the whole thing colored in there. I normally tell you not to outline the edges of your images because you don't want it to bleed into your coloring. However, because this is a dye, there is a border around the whole thing, so it's fine to outline them. Now, my car, my florals are looking beautiful in the background. These birds are still popping um, right up in your in your face. Uh, so I can't do the background of the birds, that white die cut portion. Um, I can't do that until I have them adhered because I don't know what color should be what. So I am going to glue down my background flat to my white card base. Um, and then that way I can pop my heart and my birds up over top. That will give the opportunity to kind of see that white peeking through, which will create some contrast and some added interest into the card design. If you didn't want to see that, you could put this on top of a navy card base and you wouldn't be able to see any of that. But I liked the white kind of showing through. Alternatively, you could fit it in um, like a puzzle piece, you know, just do the inlay die cutting. You could just fit it right back in there and then um, you wouldn't be able to see any of the white either. You just would not uh, pop it up. So now I'm going to put this in. And from directly up above, like you can't see any of the white, but then from the sides or the top or, you know, whatever, you can see a little bit of that white peeking through. I'm going to, the bird that is sitting, like he needs something to stand on or it won't make any sense, or his feet need to be hidden, one or the other. So I knew I was going to put him up in the right-hand corner. He's facing left, so I need to put him on the right-hand side. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it look like he's standing on the sentiment or like his feet are hidden behind the sentiment. That's what you see me doing there. I'm just going to use my uh, tweezers to just pick up the end of those sentiment, like the end of the U, and put my little bird in place. In order to make sure everything is flush, I am going to take one of my little foam circles. These are also from Honey Bee, and I'm going to peel off the release paper, use my tweezers to tuck that underneath his little tail feathers, his little tushy, and that way he's flush. For this bird, the soaring bird that's down in the bottom left, I am going to do the same thing, uh, but he overlaps the heart. I can't guess where the foam tape is going to go, so I just keep checking uh, to make sure that there's not going to be any issues where his middle is sagging um, or well, that he's not well adhered. So ultimately, I ended up putting a little bit of foam tape on the edges of each wing and underneath his tail feather. Everything else got regular glue, and then he will go down in that bottom left-hand corner. So now we obviously want to get rid of these white outlines that we have going on. So I'm going to do the same thing. Um, I'm going to color in everything that's on the navy, navy. And then I'm going to go in with the same markers that I use to color the florals and the leaves. And I am going to put those where they match up. So like the top portion of his back wing, as well as his head, is laying on a pink flower. Um, and there's a little bit of the center on there. So I can't just go in and color it pink because it won't match. So I do have to go in and put down a little bit of a darker color and then blend it out with the lighter color. Same thing with this purple uh, flower where the, the chin is kind of resting on. I have to go in with a slightly darker color for a portion of it and then go over it with a lighter color because we did do the glazing so we want it to match. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the other bird. This is where I realized that my birds were still too bright. So what I did was I went in with a W1. I chose the warm gray because orange is a warm color. And I just coated everything in the orange. It's still orange even though we put a gray over top of it. We just knocked back the saturation. And I think it looks so much better now. 
For the um, gemstones, I used the Hugs and Kisses gem stickers. There's a really pretty um, kind of like corally orange color that matched the birds pretty well. I used that. And then I gave all of my florals a good healthy coat of the clear shimmer. And that's it. That's the whole card. So thank you guys so much for joining me. I always appreciate your time. I hope you're inspired to kind of switch up your color pal palette and see what you can get out of sets that you already have. Um, and again, thank you. I always appreciate you and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.